I'm Ambassador Larry Huggins. I'm uh, in Barcelona, Spain, and we are studying the Gospel of Paul. My uh, my technology man, Elder uh, Bob, pointed out that my my uh, numbering had a problem, so he's going to fix it for me, I think. And uh, if he can fix it, we'll see. And in the meantime, let's pray. We're going to get started. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for everyone who's participating with this live stream broadcast about the Gospel of Paul. And I pray that it will get in everyone's spirit and mind because this will make us more successful so that we can better enjoy the good life that you came for us to have. I wish I could hear you say amen, but you can always put comments in the comment section and float up a few of those little uh, emoticons. Uh, and uh, uh, we're going to try to straighten out some Facebook issues that we've been having about where this live, live stream goes to when it's streaming live. Praise God. All right, you ready to go? Let me, uh, let me rearrange my screen here a little bit. I was, I was uh, hurrying to get to this. It seemed like I didn't plan my, my uh, day that well. I was working on a project for Pastor Loretta, and I got caught up in it. All right, praise God. Now I want to talk to you uh, about the, the Apostle Paul and, and uh, how he received his gospel. I've already touched on this, but I've, I'm going to talk about it again because I have sort of a timeline that I want you to be able to see of how he came to be the apostle that he is. <laughs> not was, but still is, to the church, to the early church. And listen, I'm having a problem here with my lighting, so I'm going to move that a little bit. There we go. That's still there. It's bugging me, but I'm going to leave it. Praise the Lord. We are actually, I'm going to give you a little commercial announcement. We're actually uh, going to have a technology upgrade around here. In fact, Elder Bob, whom I just mentioned, who works with us in technology, is aware that we're using old equipment, and uh, kind of have it cobbled together, and sometimes it works uh, okay. Most, most of the time it doesn't work okay. And so he, uh, he took it upon himself. The Lord put it in his spirit to raise the money for us to be able to buy new, new, new equipment, brand new equipment. And um, the dollar amount on that is 4,000 euros. No, $4,000. I'm sorry. I think in euros because I'm in Spain, but it's $4,000. And uh, I believe a little over a thousand has already come up, come uh, come in just like that. So uh, if you want to participate and invest in our equipment, it'll help us have a better product and you'll have some good seed and good ground. And think of all those people who are going to be blessed because you help bless them. Good deal. All right, this will be a good place for Bob to edit this and, uh, and, and put it on YouTube. Acts uh, 22, 6 through 8. This talks about Paul's conversion, and he was con converted because he had an encounter with the resurrected Lord. And if this, uh, if this episode had a, a subtitle, it would be uh, the, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus in the life of Paul or the theology of Paul. So you know that the Apostle Paul, uh, his life was maybe a little bit contemporary with Jesus, but uh, it's very unlikely that he ever saw Jesus or heard him preach. In fact, I'm not positive about that time timeline there. Somebody could fact check that for me and let me know. We'll work together on this. I'd like to know. It came to pass as I made my journey, I was come nigh unto Damascus about noon. And suddenly there shone a, uh, from heaven a great light about me. And I fell to the ground and I heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, who are you, Lord? 
And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you persecute. Now, uh, Jesus was seen by Paul as a, as a light, a blinding light. In fact, he went blind from it. And um, else, elsewhere, he said that it was, uh, it was brighter than the sun. So how do we know it was brighter than the sun? Because he saw it at noonday, and that's when the sun's the brightest, and what he saw was brighter than the brightest part of the noonday. So obviously, uh, he was correct in saying that it was brighter than the noonday sun. And uh, that was his first encounter with the resurrected Jesus. And you know what followed that, that he uh, went into Damascus, and uh, a couple of days later, Ananias prayed for him, and he got his sight back and was saved and baptized and filled with the Spirit too. And Acts 9.20 says, straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is, the Son of God, just like that. He gets saved uh, one day and almost the next day, the very next day, a uh, very short time there, he's already preaching in the synagogues. Now he was known as being a persecutor who went into synagogues and dragged the Christians out of the synagogues and had them put in chains and sent to Jerusalem and imprisoned and, and even martyred. Uh, and now, of course, he was the best known person and, and uh, he, he was even known in the Gentile world as someone who punished Christians. He was like internationally famous but, uh, for the wrong reasons. Infamous would be the right word to use there. He was infinite infamous. And uh, so now he's preaching Christ just like that. Now, if you read after some Bible historians, they'll tell you that Paul didn't uh, preach for 14 years. No, that's not right. Uh, it, it was 14 years, and I'll get to this in just a moment, when he got his gospel. But he knew instantly that Jesus was Lord because he met uh, the Lord on the road to Damascus. And the Lord uh, said, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. And because Paul was a Hebrew scholar and a historian, instantly all the messianic prophecies made sense to him and they all pointed to Jesus. And he knew that because of his background. So he could preach what he knew. And what he knew for sure is that Jesus is the Lord. He is the promised Messiah. He was raised from the dead. That much he knew and he could preach. And, and you can too. You can preach what you know. Uh, you can get started right away. I did. Um, I mean, not the day I got saved, but uh, the day I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I started, I started preaching, giving my testimony, and I'd talk to anyone who'd listen to me. I'd go out on the streets and pass out tracts. And, you know, I was one of those wild-eyed uh, people that you tried to avoid. <laughs> but that's what happens when you, when you get saved and you have such a zeal for souls. And uh, so Paul did that. He preached what he what he knows. And if you know that Jesus is Lord, you can declare that. See, another word for preaching is declaring. And uh, Paul declared that Jesus is Lord right away. But then, Galatians 1.15, this is interesting because uh, you and I both know that Paul was a persecutor to the church. But then he turns around to the Galatians in the first chapter, 15th through 17th verses. He said, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach to the heathen. I'm going to pause there and I'll finish this scripture. But he said, I was separated from my mother's womb to be a preacher, to be an apostle. And yet we know <laughs> that in the beginning, uh, he was anything but an apostle. He, he was a persecutor of the church. But he looked at his life and he, and he realized this is what I was put on earth for. After he got saved, after he met Jesus, after he got a revelation of Christ, he had a revelation of, of what his life's assignment was. And he said, it's what God put me on the earth for. It's why I was born of my mother is so that I could preach this, this gospel. He said to reveal his son in me or to uncover his son in me. Paul's message was the uncovering of Jesus or the revelation of Jesus. He preached revelation knowledge. He didn't just preach secondhand information that he got out of a book or a Bible school or an outline. He had an encounter with Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, and he had direct revelation from Jesus, and he preached that revelation. We call it Paul's revelation. Praise the Lord. It's, it's his whole story and what he believed about the, the uh, life, death, 
crucifixion and death, resurrection and ascension of Jesus in his present day ministry, uh, we call that Paul's revelation because he received that not from men, but from Jesus. So let's pick up where we had our bookmark. He said, immediately, I didn't confer with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them who were apostles before me. In other words, Peter, James, and John and the others. He did not go present himself to, to them at first. He went out with Jesus. He went to be with Jesus. He was probably preaching, uh, but but he he had a time when he was with with uh, Jesus, and it was 14 years after he got saved. Uh, Galatians 1, 11 and 12, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Who is it after? The resurrected Lord. It was direct revelation. For neither I received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus. Hence, the uh, Paul's revelation. 2 Corinthians 12, 1, 4. Now I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And he's talking in third person about himself. He said, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Now that's where the Bible scholars say he waited 14 years before he started preaching. But no, no, no. He started preaching day one instantly. And uh, I'm sure he preached it when he was in Arabia. But he did not come present what he was preaching to uh, the apostles until 14 years had passed. So he said, uh, I received it. Not of men, but it was taught by the Lord Jesus Christ. And then 14 years ago, I was caught up into heaven. I'm going to put it in first person. Into paradise, and I heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. And you've had, heard me explain this before. He said, I, I was teaching things that others call unlawful. I heard things that others call unlawful. I was taught things by Jesus that the good Jews call unlawful because they were contrary to the law. You know why? Because it represented a new covenant. The old covenant had passed away. And so it's not really unlawful to break a law of a covenant that's not in existence. We've moved into a new covenant and we have a new law called the law of love. Amen. And we do have some commandments in the, uh, in the new covenant. Praise God, you know, to please God and to obey God and to walk in the spirit and live by the spirit. So Paul got his revelation over a 14-year period. And during that time, there was at least one event, maybe more than one event, we don't know, where he was caught up into heaven in the presence of the resurrected Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> now then, as he's preaching and his, and his ministry is going forth, he said, this is how I do it. And I, this is how I do it too. Talking about Larry Huggins. 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, Paul said, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. In other words, Paul's entire focus was on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and what he accomplished in heaven. It's what we call the substitutionary sacrifice. And Paul got that revelation of what Jesus did on the cross from Jesus himself. And in the next episode, I'm going to go into depth. I've touched on the substitutionary sacrifice, but I'm going to talk about it more because it's very important to grasp this. So make sure you, you watch the next couple of episodes. In fact, don't miss any of them. Uh, when I hold miracle crusades, when I go in to preach and teach and elevate faith and, and um, you know, help uh, demonstrate the power of God, <clears throat> Paul said, uh, I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in power and demonstration of the spirit that your faith might not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Uh, th that's my rule. That's how I live. I want to preach my highest revelation of Jesus. And that's what John G. Lake said. John G. Lake said when he, when he went to Africa, <clears throat> before he had ever preached uh, in any of the churches there, before he ever uh, preached to any people who lived in cities, city dwellers, when he was just preaching to, um, you know, shepherds and people of, the, uh, of, of the, uh, the land. He said, I determined to always preach my highest revelation of Jesus. And, and I've done that. I've preached to uneducated people and uh, people in cultures that really don't have a, a sophisticated background educationally. But Nevertheless, I preach my highest revelation of Jesus, and people always get it. Praise God. They always get it because 
there's this thing called revelation knowledge. And as I'm preaching, they're getting it. That's why Paul could say to the Galatians, before whose very eyes Jesus Christ was graphically portrayed as crucified. Graphically, that means something you can see before your eyes. Were the Galatians there when Jesus was crucified? No. But when Paul preached about the crucifixion, they saw it. They had direct revelation. Their eyes are opening. That's one of the most exciting things a preacher will ever experience. Or someone who's listening to an anointed preacher is when the revelation knowledge comes and you start seeing it in front of you like a movie. Yeah, they saw it. And uh, the Galatians saw it. And that's what Paul did. He always preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And it blessed a, a lot of people, but it, it made a lot of people mad too. Uh, they couldn't argue with him, so they tried to kill him. <clears throat> now then, when Paul built churches, and this is for a future episode, I'll just kind of give you a teaser. I'm going to talk in, in the future about the church that Paul built. The church that the Apostle Paul built, not a church, but churches all over Asia and Macedonia and Greece and Italy and you name it, uh, Syria. He, he built lots of churches and he pastored them all as, uh, as the apostle for many, many years. Praise God. Over 20 years, almost 30 years. Uh, and he did it the same way all the time. Now, I'm, I'm going to go over, but I gave a commercial announcement about our equipment upgrade offering that you're going to be a part of. I hope. So let me go ahead and finish this up. He said uh, to the Corinthians in chapter 1 Corinthians 4, 17, he said, For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, or Timothy, who's my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, the way I do things, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Paul always taught the same thing everywhere he went. What did he teach? The substitutionary sacrifice, the death, burial, and resurrection. Let me wet my whistle. It's hard to say substitutionary sacrifice when you have dry mouth here. All righty. That's too much information, right? We're going to finish this up. And this, again, is out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. And here's Paul's method. So pay attention to this. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, right before he was born, he was called to this grace, as a wise master builder, an arch tecton, I have laid the foundation. So everywhere he went, in all of his churches, he had a way of doing things. And the first thing he did was lay the foundation. You can't build a house without a good foundation. The deeper and stronger the foundation, the greater and more secure the house. And you and I need to have the same foundation. And if your foundation is a little shaky, then you need to work on the foundation. I'm going to help you do that. You see a lot of people who get shook up. Uh, they see maybe uh, preachers make a mistake or lie or get into sin and they, and they fall away. And you ask them, why'd you fall away? Well, I mean, I was my faith was shaken. Why? Because a preacher did something stupid? No, it's because of a lack of a foundation. When you have a strong foundation, everybody can fail, but you're going to stand strong because you know in whom you have believed it and you are persuaded that he is able to keep you against anything that might come your way. So you got to work on the foundation so that you're not troubled by current events and things that are going on around you and in the church. Don't have your eyes on people. Have your eyes on the resurrected Jesus. Okay, he said, as a wise master builder, I laid the foundation and another builds thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay, can no man, this is hard to say, can no man lay than that is laid. Don't you love the King James Bible? which is Jesus Christ. All right, let me, let me rephrase that, paraphrase it. Paul's saying there's only one foundation and that foundation has already been laid. And I'm going to emphasize that you have to build carefully upon that foundation. And that foundation is the revelation of Jesus, his life, crucifixion, 
resurrection and ascension, his present day ministry in heaven. You, you take all those things and put it together. And Paul often just say resurrection and he means substitutionary sacrifice. He says crucifixion and he implies the entire substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. And that's what he's doing here is he laid this foundation of the teaching and the knowledge of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ, what he accomplished in his life, his death and sufferings, his ascension, his present day ministry in heaven. Praise God. Okay. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the, oh no, I have to back up. If any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try or, or test every man's work what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he'll suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved so as by fire. I've heard people teach on that. Well, you know, some of us are going to uh, be, uh, uh, you know, barely saved when we get to heaven, just barely saved. No, 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 you're going to be totally, gloriously, 100% saved, no doubt about it. It's just that some of the junk in our lives is going to burn up. If we don't want it, we don't need it, so thank God. The fire is a purifying fire. It's a refining fire. Everything that can be burned shall be burned so that those things which can't be burned will remain. So uh, we, we embrace uh, this refining fire of God. It's not a fire of punishment. It's a fire of purification. And it's a process. And thank God we do the best we can down here. But I guarantee you, before you get to heaven, you will pass completely through the refining fire, yet the flames will not kindle upon you. Our God is a consuming fire. So, uh, you know, we don't, we don't back away from him because he's a consuming fire. We go to him because he's a consuming fire. We're like... The burning bush that God manifested in in Moses' day, uh, the fire was on the bush, but the bush wasn't consumed by the flames. You and I, our lives are hid with Christ in God, who is a, who is a consuming fire, but those flames do not destroy us. They empower us. Praise God. They make us untouchable. Uh, they make us glorious. Praise God. It's a fire of glorification. It's the Shekinah of God. It, it's the cleansing fire of Jesus. So thank God that our works will be tried. And uh, let me tell you, uh, in your life, you have gold, silver, precious stones, and you have wood, hay, and stubble. There are things in your life that aren't going to go to heaven. In fact, it's unlikely you'll even have a memory of them because there's not going to be any sadness. So the sad things are going to be burned away and regret burned away and the shame burned away. Uh, yeah, the sin, gone. Praise God for the refining fire. Amen. But the other things, gold, silver, and precious stones, they're purified and they're revealed or made manifest by the fire. Praise God. Thank God for the fire. Father, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire right now. We don't have to wait until we die to start getting purified. The Holy Ghost will purify us right now in Jesus' name. Amen. This is what Paul taught is what I teach, is what you need. So um, thank you for watching. Be with us at Z Church every Saturday morning, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. You can also watch and listen on Facebook Live and YouTube Live and Twitch Live. I recommend you go to our website, zchurch.life, and you're one click away from being on the Z Church platform, which is a great experience. You might get a personal word of prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. It happens. We're Holy Ghost Church. And uh, the other thing is, always try to keep it simple, sweetheart. Cause sometimes the most beautiful things can be so simple.